So in this video, I'm going to go through all the fundamentals of vibrato, how to learn it, how to kind of fine tune it and make it natural. But before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be the first to know when I release a video. Before we start learning, let's just make sure that we understand that vibrato is a controlled motion. All too often, students have an improper vibrato that is sort of a spasm of their left wrist or arm. This is not vibrato. This is just sort of a nervous reaction. Vibrato is a very clean, very articulated motion of the left hand, finger, and arm back and forth in a regular sort of waving motion. So let's just talk about the anchors of the vibrato, and that being the fingers and the thumb. These two pressure points need to be firmly established without moving, okay? The rest of the hand and arm move very, very um, regularly and very controlled, but this fixed point of the finger and the thumb do not move, okay? They are firmly attached to the fingerboard and the back of the neck. Now that we've established that, let's just kind of learn the motion of the fingers. Okay, the fingers kind of go up and back in a sort of flexion and extension motion as such. I try to put all four fingers down just so you can basically feel this rocking back and forth and, and having the fingers, like I say, attached with the thumb. At first, kind of go excessively and flex too far just to kind of feel that motion, okay? Then we can maybe just do it with three fingers or two fingers, just making sure we have this motion of the fingers rocking with a fixed, like I say, a fixed point on the string and the fingerboard and the thumb. Okay, now that we've kind of established that, there are several kinds of vibratos. Of course, arm, you know, wrist and finger. I think of it as sort of a hybrid of everything and at times, lots of vibratos can kind of take on all kinds of forms, okay? I think to, to start, it's best to kind of just learn this arm motion first. And we can just do that by extending and flexing the arm as if we were knocking at the door, okay? And just getting this sort of established with a regular pulse. Knock, 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 knock. It's a very sort of simple thing that we all do and it's easy to kind of replicate, okay? After we've done that, put the violin on your neck and then under your neck, and then you can just sort of do the same thing and knock the peg. Knock, 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 knock. Again, in a very regular fashion. Knock, 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 knock. And just make sure, you, like again, we're doing it very, very controlled. Okay? Simple. Then we can start to sort of add some pieces and put the thumb down and do the same thing. Keep the thumb anchored and knock, knock, knock. If you want to do it with the wrist, I'm okay with that. There are a lot of, lot of violins that do just primarily wrist. Some do primarily arm or, or some do up hybrid of both. Okay, but let's anchor that thumb and knock. Knock, 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 knock. Then let's add the second finger in first position on C sharp. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing, knocking and anchoring the thumb and second finger. Knock, 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 knock then essentially we're just gonna rock and knock. We're gonna rock the finger backwards, flex it, and knock the peg. Rock and knock, rock and knock. Keeping that thumb very still. And it's so important to make sure this is anchored, both the thumb and the second finger, that they don't move. And we have just enough finger pressure and thumb pressure to have that motion going. We don't wanna have any um, pressure on this part of the hand we just want to kind of rub against the neck of the violin with this part of the hand. But again, we're rocking, knocking, rocking, knocking. Okay? And then we can just maybe do it with the third finger. Same idea. Okay? Next, let's take a metronome. Put it on about 65 equals a quarter. Okay? And we're going to just do this very simply. Thumb anchored, second finger anchored, and we're going to knock, knock. Knock, knock, knock. Rock and knock and rock and knock. Very simple, very controlled. And feeling very, very, like I say, we're rubbing this part of the hand against the neck of the violin. Rock and knock. And, okay? Without even playing. Maybe try it with the third finger as well. And maybe the fourth finger. 
There's a lot of layers of sophistication, of course, that we can talk about, but let's just keep it simple for now, okay? And it's so important to keep this finger very relaxed as well, so it keeps, like we were talking about in the beginning, that it's flexing and extending. Then let's use the bow and let's hear how that sounds. So I'm basically doing eights. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Before going any further, make sure these fundamentals are secure. The finger moving properly, the finger and thumb being anchored and that we're just essentially just rocking and knocking. Don't add speed, don't do anything ex like excessive until we have these fundamentals that are firmly established. Once these fundamentals are secure, let's add a little bit of speed using the metronome. We will use it again at, at 65 as a quarter, okay? And as we were doing, we're just doing eighths. One and two and three and four and. We can speed the metronome up maybe to maybe 20 notches to 85. But as you notice, the action is very even. I'm not essentially just going back and doing anything too acute, okay? It's very, very rounded, the motion of the wave. One other note, make sure that you vibrate a little bit under the pitch and a little bit above the pitch. We always want to have the note be in the center, the actual note that we're trying to achieve, because the intonation of the note will definitely be the one that's in the middle of that wave. Sometimes it's a misnomer that we just go down and back up. And then if we keep doing that, the note actually will be flat. We kind of have to go a little bit beyond the note and then under the note. And like I say, keep the actual intonation of that note in the middle, okay? But then let's add that speed, like I said, and go to 85. Here's another idea. We can go back down to 65, okay? and do triplets, and I'll explain why. Here we, here's the triplet rhythm. What I like about the triplet is that you have alternating impulses on one and four. So it's down, up, down, up. And you feel that sort of motion sort of even out in, the, in those different impulses. That's what is valuable that, about the triplet. And again, we can speed that up as well and go to 85. But again, this motion is very even, very controlled. Once you've achieved these fundamentals, it's just a matter of speeding it up, okay? And a vibrato is usually 16th notes at about 150, as such. Okay, that sounds like a pretty normal vibrato, a very sort of uh, average sounding vibrato with a certain amount of width, just a very standard vibrato. Of course, there's a lot of range in vibrato in terms of width and speed. But for just a very standard vibrato, 150 for 16th notes is basically, if you can do that, then you've already established a good vibrato. So that's your goal. So let's just review. First, let's anchor the thumb and all the fingers and flex and extend. Then we're gonna learn to sort of knock with the arm regularly, and then we're gonna knock the peg, then we're gonna put the thumb down and do the same, and then we're gonna add a finger, keeping the finger and the thumb anchored, and do it rhythmically, that simple. Thanks for watching, again, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Um, I look forward to hearing from you and your comments. See you guys soon.